there are a variety of skills that I would say are incredibly important. Um, I think the most, well, one of the most important I would say is, is wanting to solve real world problems. Um, sometimes people who are in the computer science space or in, you know, a, a scientific space are interested in theory and that's important too. Um, but for what we do, at least in the cloud computing space, we're trying to address and solve real world problems. Um, so an interest in, in solving those kind of problems and having projects that relate to solving a problem are really important. I mean, there's some other technical prerequisites, I would think, too, like, you know, learning how to deal with big data, you know, knowing SQL, being able to push uh, to a database, being able to pull from a database, uh, database um, you know, uh, some visualization tools are important as well, because, you know, it's one thing to be able to to do some machine learning, but it's also important to be able to, to visualize that and, and provide some sort of insight um, into your, your predictions. Um, so, you know, knowing Python, Matplot, um, Tableau, uh, even Oracle data visualization, these are all really important tools to, to help visualize. And I think the last but not least, um, the most, I would say arguably the most important aspect uh, of uh, machine learning is communication. Um, is being able to effectively communicate your results to stakeholders. It's one thing, as I mentioned before, you know, to be able to build these robust models um, and you know, have very complicated algorithms and you know, perfect time complexity and, and all this sort. But if you're unable to communicate your results uh, to your stakeholders, or if rather they don't understand um, your results, then they're, they're going to be more resistant to implement your insights um, and to actually impact uh, the market given what you found. So communication, uh, I would argue, is, is probably the most important skill you'll have um, in the machine learning uh, space. on your background um, if you don't have a technical background um, I, I think I would recommend uh, to just have some some basic uh, courses underneath your belt um, you know algorithms uh, you know Python programming um, you know database class um, you know th those are usually pretty fundamental courses that are, that are important. And then, you know, the, the, the deeper you want to get into machine learning, the more math you're going to need. Um, it also just depends on what your goals are. If your goals are, you know, to, you know, fine tune machine learning algorithms and, you know, go and go underneath the hood, then, you know, linear algebra, um, you know, and, and advanced mathematics are, are just really vital for, for being able to do that. But if you're just simply attempting to, you know, basically implement some predictive models, then uh, a working, a basic understanding of Python um, will, be, will help you implement uh, those sort of algorithms. Um, and, you know, if you don't have the time to take classes, then, you know, Kaggle is a really good resource where, you know, you can just go self-learn and, um, you know, take all these, you know, basically make yourself a curriculum and, and go through uh these resources and attempt to recreate what's already been built in some of those kernels in Kaggle. Um, that's also a very effective way of developing the skills you would need to at least get into an entry role in machine learning. Of the biggest obstacles that we have is uh, getting the proper data sets. So, you know, some of my colleagues like to say, you know, garbage in, garbage out. So if the data set that you have is, um, is, is it's a random model, and basically a very a strong indicator of whether or not it's a random model is if there's a normal, normal distribution in the columns. Um, that's kind of how you know it's probably an obfuscated data set. And you know, when you have some, some random model like that, you're not really going to be able to find any interesting patterns or correlations or being able to develop any sort of predictive model. 
Um, so that's why finding the right data set is usually the, a, a big challenge. Luckily for us, um, sometimes we have clients who provide us with um, obfuscated production data sets. So it makes it a little bit easier for us to train and, and test our models. Um, and so kind of transitioning from that, another really ch another big challenge, or I guess one thing that I would say is training and testing a machine learning model is pretty easy. Um, but being able to build a robust and accurate machine learning model is very difficult. Um, you know, and when we get into stuff like that, we're talking about like bias, bias uh, variance trade-offs and overfitting, overfitting versus underfitting. Um, so these are some of the more uh, complicate, complications that we have when we're trying to uh, build the right, the right uh, machine learning models. Um, so yeah, these are just a, a small list of, uh, and then as I kind of mentioned before to your communication, right? Being able to communicate these results effectively to your stakeholders. Um, so these are just maybe some of the challenges that at least I go through on a daily basis. Interview here. Um, so my role here is it's a little bit unique, I guess, maybe for a traditional machine learning role since we're in the cloud computing space. We're utilizing a lot of the um, Oracle Analytics Cloud as well as the Oracle machine learning tools in order to, to build and develop our machine learning models and implement them. Um, so in my interview process, um, you know, I, I was uh, I attempted to utilize the, some of the cloud computing tools. Um, and then basically present my my findings and my results to my interviewers. Um, so that's the first thing I guess is to learn. So if you're interested in working for Google, learn how to use the Google Cloud uh, for your machine learning and analytics. Um, if you're interested in working for Oracle, you know you would use the Oracle Cloud. So, and then um, after I presented my my um, results using the uh, Oracle Cloud, I, I then presented my machine learning project that I did while I was in school. Um, and so, you know, they, they weren't really concerned about the technical issues. Um, they were more curious about my, um, like the, the outcomes, basically what are the insights that I found with, with my data set. So, you know, some of the questions that I would ask was, you know, um, how could I improve my model? What are the viable business outcomes? Questions like this um, is what was posed to me during my interview about my, and I, and I attempted to build um, a machine learning, a supervised machine learning for property investment. Um, so they just asked whatever they knew about property investment and I attempted to answer it. One thing that I wasn't asked and that I now know is very important is scalability. Um, basically, how well does your implementation scale, both in time complexity and space complexity? Um, and, and so that's why it, it wasn't important for my interview. But moving forward, um, you know, people, some, some interviewers might be curious to learn about your database configuration. So, you know, star schemas and snowflakes and basically um, trying to reduce the amount of, of uh, latency when you're trying to pull information, when you're trying to query from a database. Um, so, so that sort of information becomes much more important uh, as you start working with big data and, and larger data sets. A good way to explain what analytics means is to distinguish it from analysis. So analysis typically refers to past or current. So basically looking at your historical data and trying to slice and dice it to find some sort of insights. And analytics refers more to, you know, a predictive capacity, looking to the future um, and trying to find insights, uh, trying to find some sort of advantage uh, by utilizing that future, by, by trying to predict the future. Um, and so, I mean, the reason why it's in great demand and why it's so important is because knowing what's in the future is, is a powerful asset. Uh, and, you know, it could make or break your company uh, if you just learn maybe how to better position a, a tool or, you know, predicting how many, you know, uh, telemarketers are going to need to sell a product or whatever it might be. Um, knowing, knowing how to, knowing the future is, is very powerful. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and companies now uh, have so much data. Um, you know, we, when we speak with our clients, you know, they have ter terabytes of data and, you know, they don't know where it all is and they don't really fully understand how valuable it is, at least to someone like me. Um, and they definitely don't know how to, how to access its power and take the mo take advantage of, um, what they, what they hold. Uh, you know, sometimes these data sets, sometimes an internal data set is a huge source of, of additional revenue for companies. Um, and, uh, you know, being able to apply predictive analytics and machine learning to this data is, it's almost invaluable uh, for that company and for others who are interested in that industry, who are in the same industry space um, and just those who want to learn more about it. So it's, yeah, predictive analytics is, um, it's for good reason in, in hot demand. of a practical space, um, I would recommend uh, Data Science for Business by F Foster Provost and Tom Fawcett. It's on Amazon. Uh, I've, I've read it. It's, it's a fairly comprehensive book and it's geared more towards the business side of things, which um, in terms of machine learning, I think is, uh, it, it's an, you know, it's probably the most lucrative uh, aspect of machine learning. Uh, you know, I would recommend if you're more interested in the theoretical aspects and learning, you know, what goes on underneath the hood, you know, a master's in machine learning is a good idea. Um, another resource is, uh, you know, Kaggle competitions or just going through a Kaggle data set and, um, you know, trying to understand what the, what the attributes mean, trying to figure out which attributes, which columns are basically important for whatever you're trying to predict. Um, and, you know, just playing with data. So, you know, another thing that's important to do is use data visualization tools. I, I mentioned a few of them before, like Tableau and Oracle Analytics Cloud and, data anal and uh, Google Data Analytics. Um, these are important tools to not just explore the data yourself, but to also be able to, you know, create a story with the data, try to find, so, you know, try to find some sort of um, insight with the data. Um, and, and I think a really good test uh, for yourself is if you can explain your results or findings to your grandmother. And if she understands, then you've done your job. Because uh, at the end of the day, as I mentioned this before, if you can't communicate your results, they really don't mean anything. Um, so, you know, try to explain recursion to your, to your grandma or uh, try to come up with some visualizations to try to convince your grandmother to invest heavily in, I don't know, some manufacturing company or whatever it might be. Uh, and if you can effectively explain everything to your grandmother, that's a pretty strong indication that you've mastered uh, communication as it relates to, to data visualization, visualization and machine learning. These are kind of some of the things that I've touched upon a little bit earlier, you know, some passion in solving real world problems, you know, curiosity and eagerness to learn, um, you know, and, and I think a lot of times these are just attributes that you just genuinely have, you know, you shouldn't go into an interview thinking, oh, I need to be eager, I need to show passion, you know, you, you either are passionate or you're not, or you're eager or you're not, um, you just, I guess, have to discover whether or not you have those attributes or not. Uh, you know, the other thing that I would say is really important is just a willingness, uh, you know, wanting, uh, you know, being able to learn always. Um, as I mentioned before, um, you know, in the machine learning space, there's so many changes that happen on a day-to-day -day basis that you're constantly learning just to keep up, if not attempt to get ahead. Um, so being able to do your job is one thing, but being able to keep up with the latest and greatest is also very important. Uh, you know, even for myself, you know, I'm working, you know, I, we always have time, excuse me, dedicated to, 
um, you know, learning on our own always, you know, whether it's a Udemy class or whether, you know, it's a, something with, um, you know, snow, snowflake configurations or star schemas, you know, things that honestly I'm not an expert in at all and I'm still learning about, there's always something new. Uh, and even if you have the machine learning side of things um, down, you know, R, you need to know, you need to learn about R now because there's some aspects of R that Python doesn't have. So you need to learn this new language. So there's always something new. Um, so an ability to effectively learn new things and being able to apply them is, is really important. And last but not least, something that I've iterated throughout this webinar has, has been communication. Um, excellent communication skills are, are important, especially when it comes to something that's very technical. If you are in school right now, uh, one thing that I did is um, I was uh, um, a supplemental instructor or like basically just a tutor just tutoring is, is even good just being able to you know explain complicated topics uh, simply so that somebody can understand what you're talking about I think uh, if you are a computer science student try explaining recursion to your non-computer science friends in non-technical terms uh, that's a pretty effective way of being able to communicate and uh, communicating technical uh, ideas to a non-technical audience that's that's very very important uh so i think these are these are pretty i mean this in addition to all of the prerequisite technical knowledge as well are really important when it comes to at least with in my eyes what's important when we're trying to recruit people in in our company for uh, a predictive analytics or machine learning role